Welcome to the Navy's newscast for Monday, April 28th, 2025. I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. Premier of Nevis and Minister of Public Utilities and Energy, the Honorable Mark Brantley, says his presentation on geothermal development was very well received at the ACL's Afri-Caribbean Investment Summit in March. Premier Brantley delivered an update on the Senkis and the Nevis Island Climate Enhancement Project, placing a spotlight on the Federation's leadership in the field of renewable energy, particularly through its geothermal initiatives. We are told currently by our service providers, our electricity utility service providers, that Senkits and Nevis combined at peak is only about 50 megawatts of power in terms of consumption. Small population, relatively small consumption. So that you have an understanding of where this project can potentially take us is that the scientists are telling us that we have something close to a thousand megawatts of available geothermal power, or one gigawatt, I think, that translates into. So if you figure that 50 megawatts is all that we need currently at peak, then having almost a thousand megawatts of available power means that we overnight become a significant supplier of energy. He noted that the project is expected to result in a significant decrease in the cost of electricity in addition to other benefits. If we have more power than we can use, it therefore means that we have a tremendous opportunities for investment in downstream uses. We're talking about green ammonia. We're talking about green hydrogen. We're talking about food processing, large data centers that may want large amounts of clean, green, cheap energy. All of those now become possibilities. We're talking about new jobs, leveraging new technologies, the ability to transform St. Kitts and Nevis from what it currently is to what we imagine it could be. The ACS Afri-Caribbean Investment Summit was convened under the theme Bridging Continents, Africa and the Caribbean, a Partnership for Prosperity. Along the way, I think you here in Nigeria and the business people here, you have tremendous capacity and long years of experience in energy. I'm not sure how much experience in renewable energy, but nevertheless, you understand energy markets. And I believe that we can learn a lot from you. In terms of your expertise, you can bring investment to bear to help us to harness and benefit from much of the downstream uses of this excess energy. So, with the potential for 1,000 megawatts or 1 gigawatt of power, it means that we'll power up every home, we'll power up every business, our tourism industry, which is still going to be important, but it will now be green. And I want you to imagine with me a sink it's a nevis where our transportation sector is now green, our buses, our motorcycles, our scooters, our hotels are entirely green. That is the future that we imagine, and that is the future I think that is within reach now that we have the will and now that we have some resources that are lined up in order to get us to where we need to go. Premier Brantley explained that the project has the potential to transform the Federation's economy and the landscape by shifting from a dependence on fossil fuel energy to renewable energy. Meantime, a team from the Nevis Electricity Company Limited, Nevlek, recently gave an update on the Senkis and the Nevis Island Climate Enhancement Project. The project focuses on geothermal development and other renewable energy sources to address energy challenges. We've just sent out the, the, the big document. Um, there are a lot of questions asked of us. And so we were able to, um, to answer to those questions. Um, and so we're hoping that, that there will be submissions done by May the 8th. Um, it might, it, there, might be, there might be a call for extension because we, you know, we, we sent back the, the, the responses. Um, I'm kind of late. Um, but saying that, there, are, there have been a couple of companies who have indicated their desire to come and see the site. And that's normally a good indication. Mm -hmm. when, a person, when a team or a company wants to come and see location and so forth and what you're planning to do and so forth, normally they, they, they will show interest and normally they will bid. So um, a couple of companies have indicated, so I think 
they're looking at um, either the, the, the latter part of April or the early part of May. Now that there's a, um, a, a conference in Senkis, Senkis and Nevis, because we're going to do something as well in Nevis. And so some of the companies have indicated that they're going to come to the conference. And while they're here, they'll visit the site. Nevlex Chief Engineer Ian Ward, as well as Transmission and Distribution Manager Nelson Alda Stapleton and the Generation Manager Earl Springett were the guests on the April 10th edition of Government at Work with host Keith Scarborough. Financing for the drilling stage for the geothermal energy has been secured. Yes. How important is that in the pursuit of the development of geothermal here on the yeah. Well, companies want to get paid. Yeah. <laughs> So CDB would have provided, um, mm -hmm. let us say, um, a de-risking mechanism with the 16 million, but mm -hmm. 16 million cannot drill um, five holes. Um, we're looking at roughly $5.5 .5 million mm -hmm. per well. So whatever it is, 5.5 .5 times five mm -hmm. to complete the drilling, the drilling campaign. So having secured that money, um, obviously contractors now are saying, well, mm -hmm. number one, it, the project has been de-risked. Because if, if, if they drill and nothing is there, nothing is paid out. Mm -hmm. That's what CDB have provided for us. Mm -hmm. And then other, other companies, um, SDF, have, have put forward um, some monies as well. Um, but they've, they've said to us that it is expressly for the drilling campaign. Yes. So, so the money is there. Um, so um, all contractors, there's no fear. There's no fear factor. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were asking how they'll be paid and so forth. <laughs> and so um, with the with the monies now available, mm -hmm. made, made available, contracts have come knowing that they can bid and that they can begin mobilization and that they can start the drilling campaign. Ian Ward, Chief Engineer at the Nevis Electricity Company Limited, Nevlek. Still to come? It's kind of overwhelming now with the children who are autism on the spectrum. And we are seeing a lot of that, and we don't have the, the knowledge. We'll give you the details after this break. I'm Weekly Daniel, Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Premier. As Permanent Secretary, I wish to salute the vision of our fourth national hero, the Right Honorable Dr. Simeon Daniel. It was his foresight that led to the establishment of the Nevis International Financial Services Industry, an industry that has contributed tremendously to the overall socio-economic development of the people and island of Nevis. Today, I recognize the contribution of this giant of a man as the administration commemorates the resilience and fortitude of the Nevis International Financial Services Industry. Best wishes and congratulations. Welcome back. One bill will have its second reading when the Nevis Island Assembly convenes on Tuesday, April 29, 2025, according to the order paper circulated by Clerk of the Nevis Island Assembly, Myra Williams. Premier and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Mark Brantley, will move the second reading of the Nevis Online Gaming Bill 2025. The sitting will convene with the formal entry of President of the Nevis Island Assembly, the Honorable Michelle Slack Clark. This will be followed by prayers, a motion for the approval of the order paper as circulated, messages from the Deputy Governor General, announcements by the President, papers to be laid, questions, statements by ministers, personal explanations, public business, the bills of second and third readings, resolutions, and the subsequent adjournment. The Nevis Island Assembly sitting will be broadcast live from 10 a.m. on Nevis Television NTV, Nevis Television Facebook page, and Nevis Newscast YouTube channel. Director Leonie Descent and Supervisor Onika Fortune Pollard of Stepping Stone Nursery recently spoke to some of the challenges they have faced operating a child care facility for more than three decades. They say one significant challenge is autism in young children. It's kind of overwhelming now with the children who are autism on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing a lot of that and we don't have the, the knowledge I would say that to deal with it. 
um, I had seven at one time. Mm -hmm. And no two are alike. Having that difficulty now, that challenge, I would really, really, really like someone to come and give us some counseling, okay. some knowledge of how to deal with these children. We, we need some help. Okay. When I say we, I am not talking about just stepping stoners because I'm sure other yes. schools have the challenge. Yes. Yes. And um, in some cases, we had to keep one or two longer than they're supposed to be there. They're already three, they should have gone on. But um, potty training, to have those children potty training is really, really hard. They also noted that parents have an important role to play in their children's development. And I'm a parent and, you know, it's norm that we'll be in denial, in denial mm -hmm. you know. So what I do, if I find something is strange, something is off, according to the, the growth chart of a child, I try not to interfere with the parent. What I would say, because the nurses do spot visits, I would say to the nurse, um, the child might not be in your district, but could you ask wherever the child is registered to take a look you know, at the child, child's behavior so you can talk to the parent instead of us talking to the parent because, you know, it's my child, yeah. my child all right, yes. you know? Yes. But because of our long-term dealing with children, we know when something is on. And then bearing in mind to Dr. K, some children, you know, they develop, you know, Please. slower than some. So, mm -hmm. you know, so sometimes, you know, you have to give them a chance because right. I am one that, you know, always advocate parents, you know, do not force things on children because, you know, I would have lived it myself, mm -hmm. you know, meaning my daughter, she yeah. was almost two and she was slow in her speech. So, you know, I always like to be patient, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. and everybody develop at their own pace. Okay. Decent also had advice for persons who may be considering child care as a career or business. I think of it, um, do the right thing, you know, yes. ju just don't well, in local terms, we say shack up, you know, go to the education department, find out, you know, the right way. Um, I remember when I started, I couldn't even have a dog in my yard. That was a no-no. And then I had to do um, workshops. But yes, I would say go for it, but try to do it the right way. Stepping Stone Nursery will celebrate its 35th anniversary on May 1st with the theme Growing Together, Celebrating Loyalty and a Sustainable Future. That's it for this edition of the Navy's Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, thank you for viewing. I'm Dennis Wilkinson-Keynes.